Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show where it's about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Big Sky. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. First and foremost, we're dealing with the aftermath of last episode at the very end where we had Rand rolling through at the motel with the truck. Luckily, Jenny's alive. She's a little banged up, but she's alive. But sadly, Angela died, and it's like, okay, before she could even spill all the full dirt. So at the same time, you know, um, Cassie and Lindor are still at uh, Mary's place. And obviously they go outside because the door's wide open. So um, Ronald left them a little gift and stuff like that. So either like he either he came back and dropped that off or he was still relatively in the area. So while they were out inside, he snuck by, left the doll and everything. It's like that's pretty damn ballsy to be fair. That's just like who Ronald is. So I guess it's not too much of a surprise on that front but still um but obviously we have jenny confronting um the sheriff about his involvement and everything but obviously he's trying to pretend like oh i didn't know but it's like yeah angela's dead because of you because of you connected to this family whatever dirt they have on you whatever they have on this entire town so you even had the sheriff confronting horse to later on about like Okay, fact is, Rand did this and that, and it's like, well, my son, or there's people who have, uh, who can put him on a ranch. It's like, there's also witnesses that clearly saw him at the motel, too. And for him, it's like, no matter what our circumstances are, I can't do this. I can't cover for you. Because the fact of the matter is, Angela was one of my people. She died. And it's like, that's also the effed up thing. It's like, oh, it's only an issue when one of your people died, you know? Um but that's that's where we're crossing the line, considering everything that's going down. But this is where we draw the line. That's a, it's like a, oh, you know, it's all, it's all fun and games until it hits a little too close to home. So for him also, it's like this is such a public thing that it's like I have no choice. Like Rand's gonna have to be brought in or whatever. It's like for him, it's like I'm not covering you for any more. Like this is your mess. You have to clean it up because Rand and them like this. Like it's like did you give Rand the orders to do this? It's like no. Either way, this is kind of your responsibility. Which later on he's chewing Rand and JW out because basically saying like now you're gonna go dig a hole for your brother. And while you're doing that, contemplate that basically you could be in the hole next, that you won't ever see this ranch, you know, because obviously he's leading this to JW, but it's like, you know, you guys keep doing horror shit like this, like, you know. Which we also learned a lot of interesting things in this episode, too, because Cheyenne continues to be the master manipulator. Everything she did this episode, she like acts like she's kind of like, oh, in control one moment, especially some of the stuff her mom does the episode. She's like, oh, no, mom, maybe we should. It's like, no, everything she's doing is orchestrated because she's trying to turn the entire family against each other. She finally tells her mom about what JW did, that he's the one that ended up killing um, Blake about the whole Cole situation, which I'm sure she already knew about that. Uh, cause she didn't ask too many questions about the cold thing. It's like, she, she already knew it and stuff like that. So, and obviously she's even later on trying to suggest like, you know, like, you know, it's like Rand, oh, you, here you are trying to pretend to be normal and everything. And you also can't do anything without your brother's permission. And it's like, oh, you killed Cole. You've done this and that. And it's like, well, at very least, no matter, how, no matter how much of a psychopath Rand is, JW, at least he hasn't killed a brother. Yeah, so it's a thing of just kind of like trying to turn them all against each other because like the best way to deal with this family is just sit back and watch them tear each other apart. Like, yeah, they're kind of pointing their fangs at her, but all she has to do is silently wait till they kind of devour and de exhaust each other, come in for the kill and take control of everything. That That's what I continue to talk about. Like, Cheyenne isn't, like, a victim in his family. Like, the only victim you can make the argument is, like, Blake kind of went along with things, but he tried to leave. And the sad thing is, if he had probably, like, stuck around for Cheyenne or, th or at the very least got Cheyenne away from all this, who knows who she could have been. Like, she could have been, like, Blake wanting nothing to necessarily do with this family, but, like, Blake got away so he wasn't corrupted. He could have easily become, like, JD if he had stuck around. We see what Cheyenne has become, and it's, like, for her, it's, like, all the that she's had to deal with the abuse and just being kind of lesser than amongst the family, um, both her and Margaret, but a lot on, on her particular case because it's like she also had to look out for her mom because her mom wasn't looking out for her so she had to look out for herself so Cheyenne's all kinds of screwed up and we've seen that more and more with every episode I was like first I was like I don't know uh, it seems like she's kind of screwed up then the uh, next episode I was like oh maybe she's okay and then as every episode subsequent happens it's like oh no she's definitely like 
she's definitely taking after her family because it's like for her it's like that's all I have like if I if I don't take this I'll have nothing like what have I done with my life there's no escaping this family like this is kind of all I have so it's also the biggest middle finger she can give to the entire family her brothers and her dad and kind of to her mom by taking over the whole operation it's like you guys saw I was small and weak and lo and behold look who's still standing after the bell rings in this metaphorical boxing match essentially so like, just a little seed she's planting throughout the episode, like I said. It's just, it's fascinating how she plays the game. Which, even, like, there's a conversation... Well, she even learned from her mom, like, Oh, yeah, like, I tried to poison your dad years ago. And it's like, yeah, put rat poison in his slice of the meatloaf. Because it was like a moment, like, it was like, I just came home from the hospital after you, like, the night after you were born. Your dad was sitting there waiting. Fork and everything, plate in front of him, like, where's my meal woman type of shit. It's like, wow, bro, that's some next level stuff. And so for her, it's just like, she just, just had enough, and she tried to poison him, and it's like, the SOB survived. For her, it's like, that bastard is too damn mean to die, you know, so... Because part of me was wondering, like, oh, did one of the others kind of accidentally ingest it? But she made a point to say, like, no, I put it specifically in his slice, and it's like, no... He's in a bad condition right now, but that's just probably a byproduct of just, like, being older and everything. But I'm like, uh, it's kind of interesting to note that, like, oh, yeah, that poison didn't do jack squat. Like, I guess, you know, it's like, it's a sad thing of, like, yeah, when you, you're just so evil, I guess, like, that evil purges anything from killing you. Like, evil lives a lot longer than good, I guess, you know, in certain occasions. So, I guess that's kind of what they're setting up on that front. But, um, obviously, there's also J.D., uh, I say JD, JW, seeing more and more of like, yeah, my brother is a bit of a psycho because Brent, uh, Rand's like, yo, I got these ideas. Basically, it's like people love being scared. And it's like, oh, the look on their face. He was like kind of getting off to it. So basically, he wants to kind of create like a maze and stuff like that. Like kind of like things that people set up during like all like Halloween and stuff like Haunted Mansion type of stuff or like like those scary like like mansions and stuff you can do he's trying to set up something like that uh which is like eh, that's an idea but he's just like super into it to the point like he's like oh yeah like the final thing is going to be me grabbing people and they're gonna I'm gonna pull on them and they're gonna think they're gonna die and he's like oh that's the best and like J. W. is like, uh, okay, yeah, sure, buddy, he's like, ha, ha, like, it's like, come on, he's up there talking about, like, oh, we're gonna work this place together, like, the fact is, we're gonna sell off some of the land, and we're gonna make bank, we're gonna be in this together, and it's like, you're, you're looking after me, and I'm, I'm look, look, you're not gonna go to jail, because I'm looking after you, it's so interesting that he says all that, and it's like, oh, like, Rand's all, like, oh, scared of jail and stuff like that, and he's saying all that psycho shit afterwards, it's like, Okay, the irony behind that. Um, maybe because he's so much of a psycho, he's like, honestly, I am scared of jail because I know that's kind of where I'm going to end up. There's a good chance of it because of my whole shtick and my whole thing. But regardless, that was just... So that's what I'm saying. Like, they're planting the seeds on many... Cheyenne is planting the seeds on many different fronts. Um, even to the point, like, during... Um, there's a conversation between Margaret and um, Horst, and it's the whole thing of, like... For her, it's like, I used to love listening to you, but I just can't do it anymore. So for once in your life, horse, tell me the truth. And for him, it's like he makes his whole metaphor about her being this beautiful cow and stuff like that. But she gave birth to, like, calves that kind of weren't worth shit. And then, like, the whole thing of, like, yeah, like, what you do is that basically you put a bolt in its head, hang it up, slice it into burgers and feed it to your family. The fact of the matter is, at the very least, that cow was worth something. It did something in the end. You, on the other hand aren't even worth feeding and making into burgers, kind of saying, like, you kind of have no worth. You're not even you're not even worth being the cow, cow that we kill to feed the family. So, but he's like, I'm going to honor my vows and stay with you. And she's like, honestly, that's the most honest thing you've ever said to me. So it's like, all right, here's a little honesty from me. And I was like, I thought she was going to draw, because she wanted, to, like, Cheyenne not to tell their dad about, or her, uh, tell Horst about, uh, J.W. and Blake, and she's like, I'm going to kill you, he's like, I wouldn't expect any less, and they kind of like, and walk away, walk out as a couple, like a united front, but I'm like, man, that's all types, the entire, that entire family, let's face it, and let's be blunt, that entire family is super fucked up, that's a super effed up family, um, hell, even later on, uh, Jenny gets some information 
about Cole's mom, Nora, and ends up visiting her. And she basically talks about the fact is that family, once upon a time, was nothing but white trash. She's like, you can't say it now, but that's still what they are. So I guess it's like they kind of hit it off big with the ranch. Like some stuff happened and they kind of worked out. But it's like that, I guess it's like that family's always been white trash. Now, whether that's like a legacy thing of like, oh, that entire family, their entire legacy has always been white trash. And that horse like generation, like him and the, his family's kind of like built the ranch up to what it is now. Well, I, well, we kind of find out there's other ex, like extenuating factors. So it's like because that because I was about to say they never really explained the boom of them going from quote unquote white trash to like where they are now, like how they have such control over things. But that is like well, we kind of when we find out the truth about everything from Gil later on, it kind of makes sense. So. It's kind of like, because at first I was like, oh, all those barrels, like we know one of them is where Cole's body is, but I'm like, oh, they must have bodies in all those other barrels. It's a little bit more than that because Gil finally opens up about everything because Gil's the one that they sent to Cole's mom to be like, oh, yeah, he stole a truck and ran. She's like, no, that man was put up to it and was lied to. It's like, I never heard from my son again. It's like. He, he knew some shady stuff was going up there, but he never really went into details about it. Well. Gil opens up about the whole thing. He opens up about knowing about Rand killing Cole because Cole took the payoffs for long enough, but eventually he started asking too many questions and he had an argument with Horse and Rand because Rand made it seem like he doesn't remember like it was an accident, but it's like, no, it's from Gil's perspective. It's like you uh, he killed uh, Cole on purpose in his own twisted way trying to protect their dad. So there's that element to it. So... It turns out that basically the main line of water for Montana, it's like there was like companies dumping stuff in it and they needed to at least keep the front of like, okay, we're doing better. But it's like, honestly, we are dumping our waste somewhere else. And so horse and the sheriff came up with a deal like splitting 50 50 because that's where the sheriff comes into play. Like he kind of helped set up the deal. He also gets a large chunk of this. So that's why like keeping, you know, Horse and his family good and happy and complacent works out for him because it, you know, keeps their deal in play. But basically, that's what the barrels are. That's what the ranch is actually for. And that's also a conversation, too. It's like, they care about the land so much, so why are they poisoning it with all the waste? It's like, well, you'd rather the land be dead than, you know, um, give it to anyone else. It's kind of like, oh, you'll take this over my cold, dead body. It's like, I would rather burn this house to the ground than never let you get it type of thing. Um but it's like, yeah, it's not just the book. Can we find out it's like the uh, workers? Uh, the way Gil was saying, he was like, yeah, these are the immigrant workers that were working here that got sick and those who crossed them. I didn't know whether it was a thing of like, I didn't know how to interpret that when they crossed them thing or whether he meant like, oh, the, all those who crossed the um, family and got killed or whether it's like, oh, like all those who crossed paths with the um workers who, who were sick and died from dealing with this waste those people got sick and died as well I, I didn't know how to interpret that line I feel like it could be interpreted either way but it's like so like there's not just Cole's body there there's a lot of bodies on that uh land uh during the funeral and everything we have Margaret grabbing on to JW being like oh I know what you did holding on tight he's trying to pull and his mom off and everything and it's like oh she's holding on for dear life then later on like at the house, she's like, okay, taking that thing down. She's like, hey, I want you to put this up. And basically tells her um, her children to all get on it now, like all three of them. And it's like, oh, I drew it for Blake. And it was kind of like, it was like a kid's drawing too. It sounded like, maybe maybe she's just implying like she framed it because it was something Blake made. But it seemed like she said, I drew it. So it was like, and I think that speaks volume that it looks like a kid's drawing. I mean, granted, she might not be a good artist, but it just seemed like, interesting the way it look and maybe that's kind of an implication of just like her mental state right now uh she seems like she might be all for rocker but also at the same time like this might be the clearest mind she's had in a very long time she was even kind of saying that to horse like i've i'm collected this is the most collected i've ever been over the years it's like what was her uh word specifically but um yeah she said like yeah i drew this picture for blake yeah, um, I want to go to Paris. I want to go to the tower in that picture. And Horse is like, we need to. And she stands up and he's like, sit down. And she ignores him and walks away. And it's like, because he's saying like, we need to come together as a family. Because if we don't, we're all going to like, this entire family, everything we built is all going to fall to nothing. It's not going to mean anything. Because this is all going to get taken away from us. Especially with like, Jenny and them looking into everything. So, which speaking of Jenny, we have her, Cassie, and Gil... 
uh, you know, getting soil samples, pictures of like the bodies in the barrels, getting, you know, all the evidence they need. Sadly, uh, you know, uh, the sheriff drove by as he was leaving uh, their place and ended up, you know, finding them waiting and be like, oh, horse, you got a problem. So I don't know whether that's Rand that's rolling up, maybe JW, because the argument could be, hey, you're trespassing. We have every right to put you down. The sheriff's on our payroll, too, so he can end up looking the other way for what is about to happen. Granted, they have people that's going to come looking for them if anything happens. So we'll see kind of how things kind of play out on that front. Another angle to this is a whole situation with uh, Lindor and um, Jerry. At first, I was like, because last uh, for these past couple episodes, I've been like, oh, Lindor and um, Cassie. But he also seems like he's kind of hitting it off with Jerry, too. And it's like, oh, um... Jerry kind of wanting to be there when they initially were at, like, Mary's place and stuff like that, having all this information, and it's like, oh, uh, one of Terrifo, and it's like, Cassie was like, no, and then, um, Jerry takes one, and because he's like, uh, no love for the Terrifo, and she's like, Jerry's like, I'm a more of a Samoa girl, but ain't no one no with the Terrifo, and it's like, they're having this conversation while they're examining Steve's dead body, I love that. And he's offering her another one. She's like, no, nah. I'm like, it's just so casual. Like the, the beats between them this episode were really good. Um, but um, cause they spend a little bit more time together over the course of the episode, especially cause uh, Cassie can't be there cause she's helping out Jenny with everything. Um, but obviously they're looking more and more into this Ronald thing. First and foremost, finding out about Steve, like him and Scarlett weren't married. Obviously they had their, their daughter together, but, um, that was it. But it's also like he was killed by an ice pit quick. And it's like, Oh, how very basic instinct of you. Um, there's been other things with ice picks, but that's like the first thing that comes to my mind. Um, I wonder is that what that's supposed to be. Is that supposed to be like a wink and nod to Basic Instinct or not? Probably not. Maybe I'm reading too much into it once again because like there's been plenty of like ice pick things like that. But I'm just it just made me like I said that's just like the first thing that comes to mind. Um, but other than that, um, it's like yeah, the, he disappeared like eight years ago. It's like wow, that body's been in there for eight years. Like that's why I'm like. Mary had to know, which once again is so hypocritical considering you. But I guess it's like maybe like Mary was like, "Oh, my sister did I self defense. I'm protecting my sister." Maybe that's I don't know. The way she's calling Ronald a monster and stuff like that, she must like it had to be a thing of uh, Scarlet just hid that. It's like once again, it's like you, you just never opened that freezer for the past eight years, or maybe he's been dead for a while and it just at some point in time Scarlet moved him to that. Fr like I just. Like, how did Mary just not ask any questions? Maybe she did. I, maybe she knew on some level and she just decided to look the other way. There's so many elements to that. Are just like, there's just so much to that story that's like, wait, what? So obviously they go check on Mary, um, you know, and then, um, you know, more time between uh, Jerry and Lindor because Lindor's like, well, you don't have to go. It's like, you know, just stay here. And she's like, well, I kind of want to go in there. You know, he's like, yeah, you have all the PI instincts, but he's also like, you know, um, are you sure this is job you want? You know, for her, it's like, well, I've seen some of the terrible stuff, but also I've been, you know, I'm going to be a famous singer. And he's like, right, 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 of course. But for her, it's like, at the very least, she wants to resolve this case because she can't move on with her life until she closes this chapter in her life with Ronald. Like, knowing where Ronald is, whether he's locked up, whether it's dead, knowing he's not out there will at least bring her some form of peace of mind. But, um, cause Lindor, I talked about the fact is like, you know, you need to like kind of choose what you want or the job will choose for you. This is a type of job that will choose you because he talks about the fact is originally he was going to be like a psychologist, but he ended up taking like a, a, a criminal behavioral unit, um, thing and, found a like good aptitude for it and ended up kind of getting drafted and stuff like that so it was like the job kind of found him you know and obviously like you know he got inside of the mind of people like ronald and then like for a job and also he ended up losing his sister to someone like ronald you know after like i think he had already joined the bau and i i i think not was it BAU? uh not bau um whatever the case may be I, i'm 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 blanking um right now but um so that was kind of interesting about them. And obviously they learned from the neighbor. It's like, oh yeah, she left in the big rig. 
with uh, her boyfriend. It's like, oh yeah, his hair's a little bit longer. Not my style. And it's like, okay, so they know Ronald's with Scarlet. But he also learned, like, right, they found out about Scarlet's thing of like, so it's like, honestly, we don't know who's the spider and who's the fly under the circumstance. And Cassie was like, they're both spiders. Granted, they just, neither one knows that. Which, speaking of Ronald's circumstances, we have him, like, out in the woods. It's like, yeah, uh, I brought, I, I convinced you guys to go along. It's like, oh, we'll have smorts for reverence. Ah, la, 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 la. Oh, I'm such a great boyfriend and stuff like that. You wanted to get away, Scarlet. Now we can. Also, I wasn't expecting him to bring Mary's dead body with him. And it's like, well, it makes sense. You're trying to get away because you're trying to get off the map because you know Cassie and Jenny are looking for you. You even toyed with Lindor and um, Cassie. So it's like, eh, you know, you, you being the psycho you are just kind of drew more attention to yourself. But to be fair, they were like on top of you anyway. So, but it's like, yeah, he's trying to get like, uh, Scarlet and her daughter out of there immediately because it's like, oh, there's blood from Mary's bag like dripping out. So he's trying to dispose of that. Um, and then later on, he shows up like, oh my god, I got lost. All the animals in the woods there. Oh, the it might have been a wounded animal, like something cute. But then there's other animals that eat that. Like he was basically like, you know, the circle of life, like these vicious animals and stuff like that. But it's also like he ended up kind of going into almost like this like very survival of the fittest conversation because it's like oh yeah like if it wasn't for like uh there being things out there that could kill us we'd be weak and it's like okay like i don't think that's a philosophy you got from your mom i think that's just a philosophy you build up yourself because you always felt weak and you want to feel strong and there's always been people stronger than you around you like rick and stuff like that and now it's like you're kind of your own man i think that's where the conversation was going but uh i guess it's because once again his upbringing being jacked up like it is he's almost like corrupting this little girl's upbringing it's like you know scarlet had be like she's 10 years old i don't want to scare her let's just have fun it's like okay cool and while they're asleep my immediate thought was when he was thinking away, I was like, okay, you're going to dispose of Mary's body. I thought Scarlet was going to find it. And then I was like, ultimately, we're going to find out what Scarlet's reaction is going to be. And I think that's going to be the key factor. It's like, is she going to be like, oh my God, you killed my sister. How terrible. But it's like, or it could be like, oh, you killed someone. I hope you cover it up. Like you were protecting us, blah, blah, blah. Maybe she doesn't realize it's Mary and just thinks like, well, I'll protect you because I'm so in love with you. Or it's a situation of, oh, it's my sister, Mary. Oh, well, she was going to ruin things between us anyway. She had to go. You know, so three possible ways on how she reacts. I'm leaning towards the latter of, like, she finds out it's Mary being like, well, she was threatening everything we had, right? Well, she had to go. Like, I think well, I think Scarlet might be on that, but it might be kind of a more of middle ground just because it's like, yeah, she killed someone, but maybe the Steve situation were, like, extenuating circumstances. Once again, you kept the body for, like, eight years, but to be fair, that's also because you don't want to go to jail, so who knows? But the twist being the daughter finding it. Granted, he can skate around that by being like, uh, you know, I found one of those wounded animals. I didn't want you to see. I don't want you to get scared, so I'm burying it. Blah, 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 blah. He could, he could easily cover that up, and I think he's going to. Because he doesn't want to hurt her either because it's, oh, I was about to say, let's take it back. Because I was about to say, he's not going to hurt a shot. Oh, right. I forgot. Forgot about Eric, the little boy he kept in a cage and was threatening to kill. Like, it's like, right, right, right. You, you, you got to remember that aspect to it all, so... Uh, nevertheless, um, some interesting developments, as it mentioned at the end, I've, I've avoided trying to watch the previews, but it's like, only two episodes left this season, so it's definitely going to be interesting to see, I, I had to make sure it wasn't like a back-to-back -back episode, it doesn't seem like it's going to be, it's going to be one episode at a time, but it's going to be interesting to see where all of this takes us going forward into the next episode. But really, that's all I want to talk about until the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live like to the fullest, and enjoy it, good day, and goodbye.